Well, they kept their animals in their tent in those days. But it was his daughter that came out. And she was to be the sacrifice. So she said to her father, well, let me go up and down the hills and wail my virginity. She had never been married and never had a child before I died. I think the end of the story is they cut her up in pieces. How did that story go? Somebody it doesn't tell you exactly what happened to her. Anyway, she was given as a sacrifice. Her life was given because he made a vow. The first thing that came out of the door of his tent, he would give to the Lord as a sacrifice. If you really want, the, the theme this morning has been a sacrifice. If you really want to know the Lord, Of him, you find your life is not your own. I remember one day I said to the Lord, You know, we say a lot of things, we should journal a lot of these things because we can tell the testimony later of what God has done. Um, I, the Lord took everything away from me. Everything I had was gone. My sports car, my townhouse, and everything. I won't go into details. So I put my furniture in the house with a pastor friend, and he was going to hold it for me until I could come and get it. Well, he decided to use it. And then uh, I had a beautiful green carpet, so he cut the carpet to fit around his fireplace. It was a Lee's carpet. Some of you might remember those expensive I never went back for the furniture it was my life savings 
a two bedroom suits, living room and a dining room set. Oh my dear, I didn't go back. So I said to the Lord one day, Lord, you owe me. I said, because, uh, but I was a new Christian. Because I gave all these things away to this pastor. I like to hear the Lord's answers. How many likes to hear the Lord's answers? You know what he said to me? I don't owe you anything. He said, you owe me everything. He said, just like that. I don't owe you anything. You owe me everything. I paid my life for you. I don't remember everything because when he said, I don't owe you anything, I almost couldn't hear. I mean, the sound of his voice made me tremble. And I got myself together and I said, you're right, you're right, you're right. You don't mean anything. Or, no, you never owe anybody anything. I didn't know all the answers, but I said that to the Lord. I live to see the Lord since I've been out here, not only there in Virginia, since I've been here, I've given away four living room suits, two dining room suits, and a bedroom suit. And I didn't buy any of them. All of them were given to me. And my house was replaced with furniture. I just hope it all matches when it's given to me. I decided to let the Lord do it. So my house has got so much stuff, I'm having to take it out to the goodwill. You cannot out give God. Amen. The original furniture was very expensive. I remember at that time I paid $2,000 for a bedroom suit. That was a lot then. That was one of the bedroom suits. One was cherry and one was maple. Nice bedroom suits. Nice furniture. I put a lot into it. I was a sinner. That was my whole life savings that I'd worked for. Two jobs for some of it. I'd rather the Lord have it than for him to take my arm. You must know that God always knows what he's doing. He doesn't make mistakes. And he's never late. When he asks you something, he doesn't fill you in with the details because he feels it's not necessary if we're smart and we're spiritual. So when I went to Cuba, they wanted a keyboard, and I knew I had one. It was under my bed, but it was only for ministry if we were going out. Well, I knew the person that asked had a keyboard. I thought, well, why don't you give yours? <laughs> if you have it, it's in your power to do something. God expects you to do it. The end of the story is that I let the keyboard go to Cuba, and God gave me two more pianos. <laughs> Both of them are electric. One's a baby grand. Then I gave one another one of those way. You cannot outgive God. And I don't do it to see what God will give me. I do it in obedience. I'm reading the scripture last night in the Bible. And I want to read this in closing. And we're going to pray for Israel. Oh, Lord, I didn't mark the place where I was going to read from. Let's see. Okay. If you shall do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee. Diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he has commanded you. And you will go and possess the good of the land which the Lord swear unto his fathers. Now he's talking to Israel, but we've been grafted in. This is in Deuteronomy 6, 17. To cast down all your enemies before thee as the Lord has spoken. And he said, When your son asks you in time to come, what means these testimonies, statutes, and judgments which the Lord our God has commanded to you? You shall say unto them, We were Pharaoh's bondsmen in Egypt, we all were, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. 
And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is in this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments for the, before the Lord God that he has commanded us. Okay. And remember I said commandments, testimonies, and statutes. Remember that. Oh, I turned right to the chapter. Can you believe that? It goes with it. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. That's in Psalms 19. I'm reading this over in Deuteronomy one day. And I said, well, I thought they were all the same. The statutes, the commandments. And the commandments, statutes, and what did I say? Testimony. Testimonies. And he said, Psalms 19. And, I, and he whispered, they're more to be desired than much fine gold. Than gold, yea, okay, much fine gold. That's the last of it. More to be desired of they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. And the Lord impressed me, if you will obey my word, if you will obey what I bid you to do, I will bless you. And that was the time he asked me to marry him. Well, it's like a husband telling his wife he's going to take care of her. But most of the church isn't married to the Lord. I can tell you that. How many know what I'm talking about? They're not married to the Lord. They have a better way of doing it. Their way is always better. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever lost a whole lot because you didn't listen to the Lord? Come on, be honest. Oh, yeah. But you didn't have to do it but one time. Thank you, Jesus. He said that your way shall be prosperous. You'll have more than enough. This is going to be the way of the church in these days to come because the money system is going to change and he's going to heap it up on people that they will have enough to help their fellow brethren and their sister. More than enough. Are you hearing me? There are going to be dentists that's going to fix your teeth without charge. There's going to be doctors that's going to help you if it's necessary. Now, God is filling teeth. In our church, we had God to fill, I don't have any teeth in three services. This was back in the early 80s. And the city sent out an inspector from the dental department. And he said, this is what he said, I don't want to go out there and do that. You want to go out and investigate what God is doing? You can't investigate God. People had new teeth, new fillings in their mouth, but they had crosses in the fillings. Wow. Silver crosses. Wow. More than one. They couldn't believe it. Now, we, God didn't do that again. The next thing he did is he brought the gold out of the hair of the people. Out of one lady especially. I'm not just talking about a little bit. I'm talking about at least 10 or 20 ounces of gold came out of her head while she was there. She came for five summers a week at a time. And when we got into the glory realm, you could see it, honey. It popped up as big as golf balls coming out of her hair. You couldn't miss it. It started back here, right around the ear. It came around. You could see it coming out on the ear, on the hair, like this. And then it popped up. It was standing, and her hair was short. Short as yours was, Mick. She cut it short so people couldn't accuse her of putting anything in her hair. She didn't have any pockets in her coat or her clothes, nor carried a purse so no one could accuse her. Wow. And when the glory would come, she, she told us, I'll just stop my head that the gold is coming. This woman suffered four different types of cancer. I mean, bad. She smelled so bad that not even the doctor could hardly stand her. Wow. She had enough the blood, enough the bone. I'm trying to remember all the type. Then she had a brain tumor. 
Only her family could stand the smell of her. And she heard that she could be healed. She was a good Catholic. This is down in, which country is? is um, Brazil. Brazil is, is it? Or Argentina. Argentina is what? That's where the big revivals were, yeah. Argentina. No, but it was, she was from the country where they spoke um, Portuguese. That's Brazil, Brazil. Brazil, okay. Yeah. Well, her husband came home from work one day and he said, I've heard that there's a place you can go and you can be healed of this. She said, well, they accept me. I've got pictures of the gold coming out of her hair. You can't miss it. It's running like fine flour being sifted. So Ruth used to catch it in the Bible and Ruth got all the gold. I say that kind of <laughs> Well, we were running around with scotch tape getting it off of the carpet. Then diamonds began to fall. It doesn't happen everywhere. It's a place you come to in the spirit and, and with truth with God that he reveals the secrets of heaven and the unusual and the supernatural. I lived there 20 years and no one ever went to a doctor in 20 years. We had a hundred and some people on the staff that lived there. Because we had camp two months a year. We're talking about three services a day. They hardly can do three services a week down in revival. They think that's all people need. You gotta fight the devil every day. God healed her of all of the cancer. Her father and mother were brain surgeons. They owned the clinic. They couldn't help her. Oil began to flow out of her body, and she filled it. See this bottle? She filled a bottle twice that size as it rolled off her. It just ran off of her. She suffered so badly and smelled so bad. She had twin boys and a girl. They could hardly stand the smell of her. You know, people get a headache and boy, they run to the medicine cabinet for something to take care of the headache. I don't want to suffer. You don't want to suffer. And we're not saying that. Because I take, I have taken medicine, but before I came out here, I never took medicine for 20 years. My father never took a pill in his life. Of course, now we're doing a different day. The atmosphere is filled. They, we don't know what's in all the medicine we're taking. God healed her, but people got jealous of her and accused her. They made her a board member, and then they decided to demote her, and she didn't understand it was all new for her. But what happened before the miracle started, she went to this church and the pastor prayed for her and said, give God 30 days. And in five days she was healed. She woke up one morning and oil was running off of her body. I mean, that's a great miracle. So we took the oil and the gold to an assayer and to a chemist. And he said, this is real gold, but it's not the gold we have on the earth. Where'd you get it from? <laughs> and we didn't tell him. We let him test the oil. He said, it was, it was like olive oil. He said, this is unusual oil also. We want to know if he could remake it. He said, you better take this back to the person that made it and have him to remake it for you. That's what we told him the story about the glory. Well, we got a little persecution. She got a lot of persecution. We took her up to the revival in Canada. I won't name it. Now they were having gold fillings, but they rejected her. Because people find it hard to believe that God would perform such miracles. Well, if he can raise the dead, what is it going to be harder? If he, think about your hair, how it grows out of your head. Think about it. Doesn't grow anywhere else except when women go through menopause, and hair comes out everywhere. <laughs> Everything gets to flopping around. Okay. <laughs> Men, you don't know what women go through. That's what we don't want. <laughs> they get male hormones that act up. Okay. We won't go any further than that. I remember she'd shake her head, and it would first go all over her 
She would just nod her head that the gold was coming. We'd always be in worship. It didn't come any other time in the service. Not during the preaching, not during the praise. It would come all up on the top of her head, but her face would be like a gold mask. I don't mean a few drops, honey. I mean, it was layered on. You'd want to peel it off. I got the pictures of it. Holy quietness when it was happening. I mean, everybody was quiet. They were very respectful to the presence of the Lord. It happened to her for about five years until she was, she didn't know how to handle the adjustments that was in the church. They should have never made her a big board member or even a Christian. The Bible says if a man has, is, needs, is waiting on his, if a man wants to preach, let him wait upon his ministry. Don't take a novice and put him out there on the forefront. They can't handle the fire. Let them learn as they go. Well, this girl, her name was Savanya. Her hair was as short as yours. To see that gold come up on her head. And then she asked the Lord, could she have other colors? So it came multicolored. It came in five different colors. It came multicolored. It came in a copper look. It came in pink gold, yellow gold, white gold. And then silver came, the silver. She's, she's learned English while she was there, so we let her preach without an interpreter. And a great big golf ball size came right up in the part as she's talking and broke. Like that. And she's trying to figure out why we're looking at her in such amazement. Well, it so happened that I got the silver. I, I got it. I had a little tiny art paint. I guess it was an eyelash brush. I didn't curl my eyelashes. I don't even where I got it from. And I had a funnel this big. And I ran with my funnel and my Bible in my little brush and I got me a bottle of silver. I got oil. Well, I wanted some gold and I thought I would never get any. Guess what happened? She decided to come to the early morning service and I had all the early morning services. I was the only one on the platform. So I forgot about the gold showing up at worship. And I'm just leading the singing, you know, and she's trying to get my attention. And I turned, she says, where's your Bible? I Oh my goodness, nobody knows she's here. I'm going to get all this gold this morning. So she took my gold and it all ran out of her head, all over my Bible. So I filled it up. I had a bottle this big of it. And I gave it to a lot of people. Um, I still have some. Somebody took my silver. I don't know who took it. Somebody came to visit me and I didn't have it anymore. I'm not upset. But there are greater miracles God wants to do. Amen. Greater. God may supernaturally produce finances in these days. Amen. I'm in the Dominican Republic Amen. and somebody had paid my way there. I didn't have not even ten dollars. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, You will find some money on the street this morning. I mean, God, can you just speak to somebody to give it to me? <laughs> to go out on the street and look for it. I mean, I didn't complain like that, but you know, God's ways are higher than our ways. Amen. And sure enough, I'm walking down the street and there's a $10 bill. Now, it wasn't 100 it was a 10 And we think God should do it differently. God tests us all the time to see if we're free with our giving. It's not just money. I don't know how many diamond rings I put in an offering. Because they kept coming to me, so I kept giving them away. I've given away about 12 sets of diamond rings. Anybody else got to report? I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm just telling you what God has done. I've given away half a dozen cars. I've given away one house. I've given away all of my clothes to go to Israel the first time. All. I don't even know how that trip got paid for. I think back to it now. I didn't. I had enough for a passport. Passports were ten dollars in those days. You got them the same day. I went to Israel 
And everything that I wanted, God supernaturally gave it to me. I wanted one of those little, their um, pearl, mother of pearl pins. And somebody gave me one because I was, they asked me to sing for them. I thought, you don't want to hear me sing. We were on the airplane, so I sang a little song. And I admired that pen and a music box with having a gill on it, which was $25, and I didn't have it. But they presented it to me as a gift for singing. Just the things that I wanted, God provided. God knows how to provide. There's going to be changes. Now, somebody told me they heard that they tried this money scheme in Canada, and it just confused everybody. You know, the digital. Anybody know anything about it? There's too much paper on the market. They, now, this is their. Remember when they, they, you did, they didn't have change? Anybody remember? Do you know why they didn't have to change? Does anybody really know why? They were afraid of the germs on the coins. Oh, yeah. I got this from the bank. So they took all the coins and hit them for a while. I mean, those liars. They're all liars. Everybody lies. Did you know the Bible says that hell has its place for liars? I mean, don't we fear this word? Anyway, let God do something supernatural for you. Come on. Talk to him. Get close to him. Get a conversation. God, what do you think about this? Now, I may be wrong, and you can tell me. I guess when I talk to God. But what do you think? Do you think you, think you could do this? Would it be too hard? So when I told him I wanted a car, some of you should be shouting. I said, don't, I said, don't you, don't you know somebody? And after I said, I said, wait a minute, Lord, we got to rephrase this. You know everybody. Can, can you have somebody to come to my house and tell me they have a car for me? That was my prayer on Wednesday. On Thursday, the lady came to clean for me. First words out of her mouth when she came to the door. I got a car for you. Hallelujah. You don't know what you're going to get on the car a lot. I'm not using it as an excuse, but that was my prayer. Don't you have somebody? Prevail upon the Lord. He knows everybody. He said, go help her. The shade upon your right hand. And he knows what you need. I talked to the Lord about my teeth. Anybody have any teeth problem? Put your hands up. This is how you do it. I said, Lord, before I was serving you, now I don't challenge the Lord like I know more than he does. I, 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 I took good care of my teeth, Lord. I went to the dentist often to clean them. Lord, you know, I took good care of my teeth. I didn't have any problems. And I said, I didn't have any, I didn't need fillings, but the, I had um, loose pockets around my teeth, so I needed to to um, need some special work. And I went to the dentist office with a friend and I had a word of knowledge. And it was something that was really difficult he was dealing with. And I gave him the word of knowledge. And every time I went to see him, I gave him a word of knowledge. Are you all listening to me? For 10 years, this man did my teeth. Four times a year, I went in for cleaning. He bonded my front teeth. He put in two crowns and even a gold one. And that's when they first came out with those electrical toothbrushes. So he bought me when they were hundred and some dollars. He said, I have, because I went with him with the word of the Lord. You understand? It's the word of the Lord. People are wanting answers. And ask God when you're going somewhere, you've got a difficult situation, give me, God, give me a, a vision, give me a revelation, give me something to help these people. And I'm telling you, your basket's going to be fruitful. Your life is going to be fruitful. I'm just not talking about money. I'm talking about your needs are going to be met beyond Amen. what you can ask Amen. or think. Is everybody listening to me? Yeah, okay. Beyond what you can ask Amen. or think. Now listen to this. Listen, listen to me, Kevin. This is a miracle. You're listening, Richard? Yes. God can make it so you don't have to pay taxes. 
You can cause people to give you trust on checks. Yep. Yep. Or if you get gifts, yep. there's no taxes on the gifts. Listen to this. I haven't bought a car. Nor a house. They've been both given to me. And it wasn't one of, neither one of them were even in my name. And I hadn't made the payments on them. Right. Listen to this. I can sell my house and I don't have to pay taxes on it. Because it was never put in my name to begin with. I put a quick claim deed on it. Are you listening to me? Uh, somebody gave me a piece of land they paid twenty five hundred dollars for, and I sold it for sixteen thousand. I called up my CPA lady, and she said, "You don't have to pay taxes because it was a gift." Right. Right. So you get several gifts in your life. Yep. And I'm trying to get this house out of my name, and it's in somebody else's name now. I'm making the house payments for twenty years. And it never got in my name until the last moment. And now I can sell it and not pay taxes. And I cried and pleaded with the Lord to give me a loan to put this house in my name. Now, you got to know what the rules are with, with the IRS. But God did not let the house be put in my name till the last minute. And I was told it was a gift. You didn't pay for it. You didn't get the loan on it. It's a gift to you. You don't have to pay taxes. God will work these miracles for everyone if we will let him do it. Amen. Don't try to override the Lord or go beyond what the Lord is doing. Because, because I was just concerned. Amen. And the woman dies. Amen. And the loan is still in her name. And the escrow was $3,000 over. I paid into it and didn't know it. So they sent a check to me in the dead woman's name. So I called them up. I said, I can't cash this check. Then I, and well, first I went to the family. Oh, we're not going to help you. They're handling the, the loans. See, this woman thought she was buying this house for me, and I didn't want it to begin with. But I moved into it anyway. You understand? I didn't have a place to live. Well, they moved out and left me with the house. So I just took up on the payments and stayed there and fixed it up. I put $30,000 into the house. Okay. I've overpaid them, and I can't get the money back. You want to hear the story? Yeah. Lord, this is going on in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so I called up Fannie Mae and Freddie. Fannie and Freddie, boy, they are <laughs> I, I, You know, I've been making these payments. It doesn't matter. Anybody can make the house payments. The loan is in this person's name. I said, but she's dead. Probably shouldn't have said that. How am I going to cash this check? I prayed in tongues. Boy, did I pray in tongues. And the Lord said to me, give it to the church. But Lord, her name is on the check. And I heard her voice. Ruth, if any paperwork to that house comes to in my name, don't bother me. Sign my name and it'll be okay. You understand what I'm saying? That was between the Lord and and me, not Fannie Mae and Freddie. Amen. She had told me what to do, and God honored it. So I signed her name, and it got through and got cashed. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you rejoice with me? Yeah. God, nothing is impossible with God. Yeah. And he's got wells for you. Come on, he's got wells. Yes. He's yes. got yes. storehouses. Yes. For this day and this hour, but he wants us to get our, you've got to get filled up with the spirit. There's been days that my water level was low and God didn't give me anything and he didn't answer me and he didn't answer my prayers. You've got to keep yourself filled with the spirit. Charge, charge, supercharge. Tell the Lord you want to supercharge. You want to be faster than that Dodge Chevy that's coming down. The road. You know, they pass everything on the road. Come on. You're going to pass up all these people waiting for their miracle on the side because they haven't let God supercharge them. Have a relationship with the Lord where you're so in love that you talk to him. And you can tell the Lord anything and he will tell anybody. Unless he can't get your attention, he'll tell on you. He'll, he'll give some money a drink. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And you're saying, oh, Lord, please don't tell that person. 
Come on, I'm just telling you. Don't, they, they, they talk too much, Lord. Don't tell that. <laughs> talk to the Lord. God, whatever you do, don't tell him. Don't tell him. <laughs> I've heard the Lord laugh. I've heard the Lord laugh at me because of some of the silly things. That's the second time I've asked him. Surely you know somebody that can help me, Lord. Yeah. You know everybody. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And if he doesn't send the person there, it means he doesn't want you to bother them right now. You understand? <laughs> you call him, Lord, I need this. It's not time. If he doesn't send somebody, if he doesn't give you the deal, it's not time. Leave it alone until it's time for the deal. Until it's time for the miracle. Here's what, I wanted, here's what I'm saying to you. The Lord spoke to me one day, and he said, you have learned of my ways by my dealings. Mm. Sufferings. We've been on suffering, suffering, sufferings. And that card plucked my last nerve, I want to tell you. Man, seven months. Woo. But I didn't complain. I just said, Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but I'll be quiet. Nobody knows. I've been brought home from church on Sunday. Unless I forced Steve and his wife to go out to eat. And I was put in my house, and I thought, i got to stay here until it's time for me to go out next week. i got to stay in this house. I can't go anywhere. Now, I can call somebody. I call people, and I paid a lot of people to help me in that. And it's the right thing to do because gas is high. I don't mean I give them a whole lot of money, but I try to help them accommodate them for help. God always supplied. Seven months. How long was Joan in that way? Three days? Three days? When he come out of there, he scared the people so bad, they repented. He looks so terrible. Come on. Some of us don't look like Walpine. Come on. Our hair sticking up on top of our head. We look like we've been in a windstorm or a hurricane somewhere. Where have you been? I've been with the Lord. Have you seen him lately? <laughs> So I'm awake until 3.30 this morning, and I said to the Lord, Lord, is there some reason why I can't sleep now? I've been praying in tongues. Is there something going on? I mean, you don't know what, what's going on. You just have to be patient. And I slept one hour. Jesus said, can you not wait with me one hour? I slept one hour last night. I said, Lord, i got to drive in traffic, you know. I don't want to get sleepy driving in the traffic. The Lord is with you always, and he wants to show you every day a supernatural way of working in your life. Are you listening to me? A supernatural way. Are you all listening? I'm talking about every day. That's why you got testimonies. I could write six books on all these little things. Sometimes they're just little tiny things, but it puts things together. You understand? It puts things in order. The little things that he does. And it's like he's saying, I remember. I remember. And if he doesn't do it, I know he has a timing on it. you got to remember this. It's the yep. timing. Yep. Yep. Timing on everything. God has his time of wanting to bless you to do certain things. Laura wants a word every year on her birthday. <laughs> I'm not going to look at Laura. And she, I called her up about something. She said, I haven't got my word on my birthday yet. <laughs> I said, Laura, God had not given me anything. I don't have anything. He didn't give me one dream, one thought, nothing. Well, she was used to getting the word, and it kind of tested her. Then God gave me a word a couple months later. But December, she'll be a week before. I'm, that's my birthday's coming. She's expecting me to get something from the yeah. Lord. Come on, how many want to hear from heaven? That's right. Hallelujah. Now you got to keep after God. God, don't you want to say something? <laughs> if you want to correct me, just let me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm going to say something. Just, I don't care. Just, just clear your throat. It'll be all right, Lord. I, one time I heard him. <clears throat> he did like that. <clears throat> That's how he did it. <laughs> I'm coming here to prayer meeting. Listen to me. Oh, yeah. I'm coming down the ramp. 
This is a cactus. And he hears what he said. He cleared his throat. He went, <clears throat> business as usual, hey. He's talking about the prayer meeting. I thought we were doing pretty good. People were dancing. I had a 92-year-old lady dancing in every meeting. <laughs> he didn't say anything else. He said, business as usual, hey. And then by the end of the ramp, I had the answer. God, it won't be this morning, I promise you. And I went, come, I come in here and I said, everybody on your feet. <laughs> Nobody's doing your own thing this morning. Listen, I'm the one who's in trouble with God, not you. And you want to get to the place where you know him, know him, know him, know him. Richard, do you have any know him music over there? <laughs> They're not dancing. Come on, give me some know him music. Know him music. Know him music. No jazz in it. Know him music. <laughs> oh yes. Oh that I might know him. Oh that I might show him. Oh that I might know. Oh, that I might know. 
to get out on the back veranda and climb the mountain. And the dream suddenly shifted and the water was already in the first floor of my house. But I ran out the back door and I woke up to climb the mountain. And that was when COVID hit. And I'm reading this word and it says, it will be like the river that flows like a tsunami on the swirl and you will not see it coming. For it's at an appointed time and it's a suddenly it will cover the earth like the Lord covered the earth with water. My holiness will return to the earth. If you think you're crying out for me, my earth has been crying out since sin came into the land. This is the day and an hour when my holiness is returning. Open yourselves. Your eye has not seen nor your ear have heard what I'm delivering to you in the next hours and days and months. I'm sending the seraphims and cherubims. Cherubims, they are at the helm of this smooth, and their eyes are holy. Their mouths are holy. And they will level everything in front of them and behind them. Oh, my. It might be that God will take the church out before that happens. My holy love will come. I will deliver this earth from demons. I will deliver people 
who are in chains. I hear the souls crying out to heaven louder than the prayers of my saints. He's hearing the cries of the hearts of people. These are all my people, everyone on earth, everyone you, everywhere you look, it's a soul with a heart. Who had a hope, who had a dream, and somehow, somewhere beyond your understanding, was ripped from them and lost. It doesn't matter if it was decision, it doesn't matter if they were addicted, it doesn't matter. If they're out of their mind, it is a soul with a heart, with no dream and no hope. I come for them. I do not want them in hell, so I'm bringing holiness. I'm bringing my purest. I'm bringing my heart as a father. Jesus, Father, people, my children, open your heart to the fatherhood of God. Let me purify you. Let me ready you for such a time as this. Because it will come with such strength, it will overtake everything. The United States of America and Israel, you are mine. And at the appointed time, I will raise you up almost simultaneously so that the end of Entire world will know that the agenda, that the fame of my son will return to the world, return to the land. Before the end, this is not a final harvest to talk about. This is a move of the Father heart of God, of my holiness who I created everyone to be. Everyone deserves a choice, and this is what this time is for. So I'm bringing my love, my children, I'm bringing my pure heart, and in his holiness and righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's not sheaves of wheat, it's not cutting them with a sickle, it's going to be love. It's going to overwhelm you so much, it will take a little bit of time. It will take time to stand under the weightiness of my Shekinah glory. There is no doctrines for this, it is a river that is going to flow like a tsunami. It is a fountain, it is a wellspring, it comes to my very throne. The heavens, I am shouting and I am trumpeting to you, my children. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get your hearts ready. Take the words from the glory, take the glory of the words and soak in it. Because if I cause nations to be born today, I can cause you to mature in a shortened time. But you must be open and you must stay with me and walk, and I'll walk you through. This is not an easy walk that brings us smooth. It's a great shaking, says the Lord of hosts. You must be faithful to the end. You must be faithful to me. I didn't say perfect because I am your perfection. I did not say you'd understand because my ways are beyond understanding. But I'm asking you to trust me. Hold on to my word and allow me to walk you through it. And you will see this move of holiness and you will be partners with me in the spirit. Now listen to this. And this indeed is a great reward that I would entrust this virgin move to my bride. Now this was in February and Kit Christmas said in May this is going to be a virgin move. In other words, a man won't have anything to do with it. Right. Just like Jesus came in a virgin birth, he's going to do it and I don't think we're going to try to stop it or it'd be very dangerous. It might cost people their lives if they try to stop it or direct it in another way. When you feel the spirit moving up on you, move with it. If you have a vision, tell it. If, if it's just a, a flash, a color, or you may not know what it is, somebody else in the room may need it. It may be their revelation. I didn't understand these things when I started traveling with Ruth Heflin. I was wore out trying to understand the vision, the revelation, and the glory realm until I got into the glory realm, soaking myself, spending a lot of time with the Lord, praying a lot, fasting, reading the word. And it seemed there was never enough time because we were so busy on the schedule. Little sleep, running to the prayer room. I'd go to... I'd have 10 minutes left over from my lunch. I'd run to the prayer room. And all I would say was, oh God, oh God, oh God. Because he knows what your oh God means. Seek him while he may be found. He's showing himself strong, but he's not telling anybody what he's really doing. How many of you know that? He's not telling any secrets. 
He's wanting us to be faithful and to trust him. I love you. Never forget that I love you with everlasting covenant, covenant love. I'm for you and I'm with you always, saith the Lord. This was given on February the 3rd. I got two copies if anybody wants them. Whoever gets up here can get it. It's two there, honey. Yeah, give it one. But come and get this one, honey, since you stood up. I'll sacrifice mine. I'll sacrifice it. It's a sacrifice. These are precious words. It's like gold. We might probably need that. I mean, she's given a word every week. I mean, you can't make this up. Yeah. Here's another one. Where's my bride? Where's my bride? I've been walk, walking as your commander in chief of the United States back and forth. I've been crying over the bride. Oh, when was this printed? Her dress is dirty. Oh. Wash me and I shall be washed. Cleanse me and I still be cleansed. Heal me and I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved. Hallelujah. We need to make a covenant with the Lord. Do, do whatever you have to do, but do it. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Whatever you have to do, Lord. Say it to him, but do it. Anybody at that place and you're that desperate? Whatever you have to do, Lord, just do it. I'll close my eyes so I won't see it. Just do it. Anybody know what I'm saying? I told you the stories of how someone asked me in Australia to do something that I didn't think it was the time to do it in a service. I'll never forget this day. I thought God was going to kill me. And I said, I don't think we should do that. I said, I think the Holy Ghost has done what it wants to do. No, just take the microphone. Singing up. That was younger then. We're talking about 20 years ago. 25 years ago. And I begged the person. I said, no, I don't think we'll do that. But because they were my elders, I obeyed them. And the Lord didn't wait long to talk to me when I got in the bed that night. One minute. He woke me up like it was like he plugged me in to an electrical socket. It electrified my whole body. And I heard these words from the Lord, strange fire. And you don't want to hear those words from the Lord. That means you brought something else into the house that's not of God. And I said, Lord, I only obeyed. The, the Bible says obey those that are over you. I only obeyed her. I didn't want to do it, Lord. You know I didn't want to do it. But to him that knows to do right and doesn't do it, the Bible says it's a sin. It's a sin. I knew the level of the anointing in that service and where God wanted to go in another direction. And he said to me, strange fire. And I, I didn't know if he was going to kill me or not. You know who else he said that to in the Bible? You know the sons? Yeah. 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 Was it Aaron or Eli? Yeah. He spoke to him, both, Eli, he took both Eli's of them. Son, Eli's son. Yes. Strange fire. God wants the fire that's of the spirit. To consume us. You come to church and make it happen. On the way to church, get to praying in tongues. Pray before you leave your house. God, do something different in the house of God today. God, we need it. We've got to be filled with your presence. We've got to know you. We've got to hear from heaven. We need, listen, I don't think the church is ready to hear what God wants to say. I don't think their, their heart can, can really take the issues of what God is saying. Anybody know what I'm talking about? A boy or a child that knows that they've done wrong and their parents is calling them in. They don't want to come in. They run, my son ran one day up a tree. He was six years old. He'd been bad to his babysitter. He had spit on her and cursed her at six years old. I said, where did you learn all that? Have you ever seen me do that? I said, I have to whip you. He ran up a tree. I said, you got to come down sometime. I'm waiting. 
because we know there's consequence. And, and there might be some have to be some discipline and some correction, and people don't want to hear that. Oh, we don't want to say that. Well, listen, it's better to hurt the flesh than lose the soul. And we want to know what it is. We need. And God is a patient God, and he's not going to... I'm being a mother to you. Pity's God. I thought I, I wouldn't be a God very long. Wouldn't be anybody left after two days. <laughs> I, you know, because I I've seen into the heavens and I thought, why hasn't other people seen? How many of you? I dream all. How many dream? Dream a lot. I dream a lot. You write your dreams down. They connect. They're like dots. And I see a lot of visions. Hallelujah. But it's only because I get myself in a new place with the Lord and talk to him. Hallelujah. Now we're going to dance for Israel. Then we're going to go home. We're not going to stay here and delay and all that. We're going to sing for Israel. Then we're going to go.